We're now going to move on to testing the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. Now the anterior cruciate ligament prevents the tibia from sliding forward on the femur or anteriorly translocating. The posterior cruciate ligament prevents the tibia from sliding backwards on the femur or posteriorly translocating. The first thing you want to do when testing the cruciate ligaments is look for a tibial sag. And that's when the tibia is shifted backwards. And this is an indication that the posterior cruciate ligament may in fact be damaged or ruptured. And this will give you a false positive test for the anterior cruciate ligament. Jen here has no tibial sag, so we'll start by testing the anterior cruciate ligament. And for this, we're going to start with the anterior drawer test and have Jen's leg in flexion at 90 degrees. I'm going to just lean on her foot here to stabilize. I'm going to put one, my left thumb on the tibia, my right thumb on the tibia here, and I'm going to pull forward to see if I can displace that tibia anteriorly off the femur. Now you always want to compare both sides because some people may be a little bit more lax than others. But here there's a great end feel and it's very solid. Now one of the problems with the anterior drawer test is I cannot account for Jen tightening up her hamstrings here and holding her tibia in place. So the other test we do for the anterior cruciate ligament is called the Lockman test. And in this test, we're going to move Jen's knee down into about 30 degrees. And you're going to place your left hand just under the knee onto the hamstrings. And make sure those hamstrings are nice and loose there, Jen. She's going to loosen those up. And then with your right hand, you're going to move medially and grab the tibia. And then in this position, you're going to try to move, again, translocate the tibia anteriorly on the femur. Again, feeling for that anterior translocation and the end feel to make sure the anterior cruciate ligament is intact. Again, you're making sure that these hamstrings are nice and loose so Jen can't cheat. Now we're going to test for the posterior cruciate ligament. And I, essentially it's tested the same way as the anterior cruciate, but in reverse. We're going to use the posterior drawer test. Again, Jen's knee is flexed at 90 degrees. We're going to put our hands on the tibia, and this time we're going to push backwards. Feeling if we can translocate that tibia, or push that tibia backwards off the femur. Again, we're feeling for the end feel, and we want to feel a nice, solid end feel. Again, you want to compare both sides, as other, some people may have more laxity than others. We're now going to move on to testing the menisci in the knees the lateral and medial meniscus. They're fibrocartilaginous rings that act as shock absorbers in the knee. If a meniscus becomes torn, it can cause pain, swelling, or locking of the knee. We're going to start by testing Jen's lateral meniscus. So to do that, we're going to start by cupping the heel. We're going to cup the heel like this and externally rotate the tibia. Then we're going to put a valgus stress on the lateral aspect of the knee here. And we're going to bring her leg up into full flexion and then down into full extension. Around full flexion, full extension. And what we're feeling for is a popping sensation or popping sound over that lateral compartment. Now to test a medial meniscus, we're going to internally rotate the tibia. And we're going to put a varus stress on the medial aspect of the knee. And we're going to bring the knee up into full flexion and then down into full extension. Up into full flexion and down into full extension. Again, you're feeling for that popping sensation over the medial aspect of the knee. There's a couple of take home points about the meniscal tears you want to know. First of all, the medial meniscus is, off, is much more commonly injured than the lateral meniscus and can be associated with a terrible triad of anterior cruciate ligament rupture medial meniscus tear, and a medial collateral ligament rupture. The second thing you want to know is this McMurray test is really only reliable if you can get the patient's uh, leg into full flexion and then full extension. We're now going to move on to testing the medial and lateral collateral ligaments of the knee. Now the best way to do that is to have Jen's leg just flex just a little bit, about 5 or 10 degrees. And then we're going to just put a valgus stress on the knee again and testing the end point to see if there's any lateral collateral ligament laxity. Again, medially we're going to just put a varus stress on the leg, 
I'm feeling for medial collateral ligament laxity. You always want to compare both sides, medial collateral and lateral collateral. Now, if the person's leg is really big, like a football player, you can use your body weight. So a lot of times people will actually cradle the knee here using their thigh, and testing that lateral collateral and then that medial collateral ligament. One of the commonest spots for knee pain is anteriorly behind the patella, the so-called patellofemoral syndrome. And sometimes even arthritis behind the patella can cause pain. One of the tests you can use for this is the patellar grind test. And what you can do is you can put your hand on the patella and push down on the patella and we'll ask Jen here to flex her quadriceps. And as she's flexing her quadriceps up, we're going to move the patella back and forth to see if we can grind the patella down. Asking Jen if that causes any discomfort. The other test you can use here is the patellar apprehension test. Again, we'll get Jen to relax her quads up. We're going to cradle the patella in our hand and we'll ask Jen to tighten her quads up again. Again, we're going to be pushing down on that patella. Now, most patients, if they've got patellar pain, won't want to tighten up their quads. They'll be apprehensive about doing it, hence the patellar apprehension test. We're now completed our knee examination. We hope you enjoyed it. We have three important take-home points we want you to remember. Number one, this video isn't meant to be completely comprehensive. It's not the end-all and be-all of the knee exam. There's many other tests you can use for examining the knee. You can find these in many physical examination textbooks. Number two, it's important to determine the exact location of pain when someone's complaining of knee pain. Often it's not the knee joint itself, but one of the structures around the knee, such as the answer in bursa. And finally, number three, don't ever forget to test the neurovascular status of the extremity uh, that's affected and don't forget to examine the joint above and below. And in the case of the knee, that's the ankle, hip, low back. I'm Dr. Andy Thompson, Assistant Professor of Medicine at the University of Western Ontario. Thank you.